Oh, hello, and welcome to Raiders TV. Um, I'm Pabs, I'm joined by my main man, Mr. Paul Nicholson. How are you doing, everyone? And we're basically going to talk you through a number of things, the fixtures that are coming up. We're going to go through some of the players that are coming in, new ones, obviously. Some are coming back, of course. Some familiar faces that we'll have seen from other teams and whatnot. And we've got a, an interview with uh, Mr. Paul James, Coach Paul James, of course. Bit of an exclusive, that one. Yeah, his first, his first interview of the season. Ooh. First one. Very exciting. I will, I mean... You may recognise me, hopefully, from the Below the Rim stuff that we do, podcasts and YouTube bits and bobs, but this man here, of course, you'll probably recognise from courtside, one of the assistant coaches. But, but the good news is, Basel's back, fixtures are out, guys are on court, everyone's here, so it's, that is great, and that, mm. that's the most important thing for us right now. So we have got, we've got some fixtures, so if I go, I'll rattle them off first, so it's Flyers Away is the first game, yep. which is the big derby, what I'd like to think is one of the biggest derbies in the BBL, to be honest with you, current state. <laughs> uh, yeah, do you know what, I don't like to play it down Flyers, because I've been involved in Basel and Plymouth for 14 years or whatever, right, through junior programmes and whatnot. Mm. I love playing flies. Like <laughs> I, uh, we, they, they all say the same. I've got some great friends there, some really good friends there. They'll listen to this. Um, you know, guys, uh, Christian, who deals with the, the junior program, I mm. work with at Southwest. You know, Andreas, I've coached with before. And they've got guys there who know us really well. And we know them really well. We don't like losing against Bristol Flyers. Mm. I, I don't want to play it down. We hate losing to them. You know, honesty is the best policy there. <laughs> But they're a good team. They're a great setup. I'm not going to take that away from them. And uh, you know, they they've had some games building up to this. But well, they, no, the, the social media game's always been good between Flyers <laughs> and Raiders. It's been yeah, something. they they do that really well. Their social media stuff is fantastic. Hats off to them. They they do a fantastic job of social media. Yeah. You know, but no, I'm looking forward to that as the first game. That it's normally a bit of spice about it. You know, mm, but I think absolutely. everyone's just going to be happy to play basketball. Mm. In terms of matchup wise, I mean they've got a lot of players coming back. Yeah. Whereas the Raiders have got probably more new players yeah, coming yeah. in. How do you how do you think we're going to match up with them? I think we'll match up pretty well against them. You know, um, Andre just normally does a a great job of recruiting big strong guys. Mm. And mm. the fact he he's kept a lot of those guys. They're a very physical team. He plays with very smart point guards normally mm. um, who can score the ball. And they've got one in Josh Wiltshire. We know him oh, all yeah. too well. Yeah. Um, and they're athletic, they're, they're well organised, but I think we match up. If you look, when we go for our players later on, we've got some great size, um, we've got some really, really smart and exciting players. And when I'm talking smart, I just mean on the court, they are very, very clever. And, and what I've seen from these guys at training, like mm. your, your Andrew Lawrence's and your know, VC Deuces, like they are clever players. Mm. They know what they're doing, they can Quite read the game team. very, yeah. very well. And that helps us. Um, and the depth. We have scoring depth. We have defensive depth. Uh, we can make a rotation and, and just be happy with that decision and not be worried about anything that we're putting on the court. You know, we, we've got matchups uh, at every level, I mm. think. I think we'll compete very, very well against them. Just before we move on, will, you, will any of you acknowledge Josh Wiltshire before the game or will you wait till afterwards? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know, really. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love, like, Josh, he's, he's a good friend as well. Um, there's, there's certainly going to be some, some banter with, with the guys that he already knows. Um, yeah, yeah. After the game, I honestly think after the game, there'll be a handshake. Well, no, it won't be a handshake, will there? There'll be oh. no handshakes. There'll be a wave from the other side of the court yeah. and probably a text message to say, good game. And we won't talk about it ever again. <laughs> like, that's normally what happens. Uh, Fair enough. That, that's normally what happens. But leading up to it, at the end of the day, it's, it's, not, it's not junior basketball or anything like that. These, these guys are professionals. Mm. That the only thing they're going to focus on is getting in and playing that game. And, and they don't care if they're playing against an old friend or, mm. or someone they've never met before. They, they want to get there. They want to play and they, they want to try and get the win. Well, somebody else is going to be coming back as well. That's a bit later on. Obviously, sorry, picking up <laughs> Rashad Hassan as yeah, well. So yeah. We'll get to that. Wolves is going to be the next game on the 15th. Yeah. That's the first home game. Yeah. And it's going to be at Pavilions. Very excited. How, I mean, what's, what is, because one of the big things about the Raiders and Pavilions is the atmosphere. Yes. Are the guys ready for this kind of, kind of lull? Is the PA system going to be in use? Because that could be a big, that could be a big game turner. Well, just put a little bit of music just in the, the background. Just the music, the thumping, the noise. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
booing and things yeah, like that. Yeah, I, I don't that. think there will be. Um, I think it's going to be quite a strange environment to begin mm. with. Um, hopefully, we're going to try and get to pavilions and have some maybe some training sessions prior to the game. Yeah. Um, get used to the environment. Uh, yeah, do you know what I saw? And I, I really want to do it, but I, I, I knew GM Phil says I, I'm, I'm not allowed. Is I want to just get like cardboard cutouts of people and just yes. put them in the crowd. Well, I was going to ask you. <laughs> they had was it the one the I think it was the first game with the with the new ownership. Loads of green T-shirts given out. Just yeah. put them over the seat. Now we'll just stick cardboard cutouts of people. <laughs> like, I'll stick a cardboard cut of my dog in there. <laughs> like we'll get I don't know Mickey Mouse stick him up there. And we'll just, All in green though. Yeah, yeah, green. yeah. <laughs> that'll, that'll, that'll throw a few people. <laughs> no, I, it will be strange. It will be strange. And Pavilions is our home. Um, we love it there. But a lot of these guys are new to Pavilions. Don't forget. Mm. You know. Mm. Um, but it's going to be the same everywhere. We're not alone in this. You know. Mm. Away teams love to wind up fans sometimes you know they'll go there and they, they like to get hyped by the energy that comes from the home fans mm. they haven't got that either so everyone's in the same boat um, you know Worcester are used to having a, a big noisy crowd Bristol mm. are used to having a big noisy crowd um, so I think it will even itself out to be honest with you I think it'll be strange but I think once that whistle blows and the ball gets bouncing and teams get talking I, I don't think there'll be an issue mm. And then, obviously, Surrey is the other team. We played Flyers again um, at home on the 18th after the Wolves game. And then it's Surrey away, <laughs> home and away, <laughs> yeah, 21st good. and 22nd, back-to-backs. Uh, <laughs> they do always say, in that situation, you're yeah. better off being the away team first. Because when you come home, obviously, yeah. they've, they're coming away from home. They've got to make the second journey and play that game afterwards. Yeah. You're in the same boat travel-wise, but you're coming home. Yeah. Um, that could play a factor? I don't, maybe, but I think at this level, probably not as much as people mm. think. I think as long mm. as you get a good night's sleep in, in, in your own bed and mm. um, you, you're sort of, your body will take over. Yeah, your adrenaline will take over. You're gonna have a good understanding of the team, and it's gonna be fresh in your head. Mm. Um, you know, you, you know what guys are doing. You're gonna see what they've done the night before. I think rest is gonna be the, probably the most important thing for all the players on that team. Yeah, you know, if you've seen the the period of time between these games is is something that we haven't seen before. You know, we're playing a, six games in a very small period of time. Mm. You know, we're gonna to have to rest and recover well, and that's where where our um, guru Elliot comes into play, who, mm. who uh, deals with our rehab stuff, he will, he will certainly have the guys well-prepared fitness-wise, mm. where that shouldn't be any form of issue. Um, you know, it's only a few hours, isn't it? It's not, you know, we're not traveling to the other side of the world, so I don't no. think it's gonna be too bad. Uh, it is the toughest journey though, they say, coming down here, even more so than sort of going yeah. up to Glasgow. People don't like coming down no. here, we're a bit strange down here. <laughs> <laughs> not, not us in general as Plymouth Raiders <laughs> just you know well it's it's a bit different isn't it you mm. you're like where's, where's, where's the houses where's the towns That's what's it. all these fields and what's going on here it's, everyone speaks a bit funny <laughs> it's a, yeah we're out there a little bit but um, people like it here don't they oh absolutely yeah absolutely. it's a nice place to be yeah I, I agree I mean I'm, I'm an outsider technically so I agree you can go to the ferry it's not too bad <laughs> So, like you say, it's in quite a short space of time. By the 27th, the cup games are all done and dusted. Yeah. What are our chances of, of progressing in the cup? Very high. We've got to be confident going here. We've got a good, good bunch of guys. We've mm. got a good team around everybody. Um, we've got all the right people in the right places. We've just got to execute. Mm. Um, it's a different preparation than we've ever had before, and it, it has been for everybody. You know, Not everyone's had all their players in yet. Not everyone's had as much training time as they would like. Some people haven't had preseason games, but that's the norm right now. Um, but the guys are experienced. You know, they've been there, they've done it, they've got the t-shirt. Um, I think we'll be more than more than ready to to really dig deep and, and, and go on a run. You know, and, and that's what I hope. So I, I'm, I've got all faith in the guys. You know, um, we just got to execute what what the plans are, and we should be okay. Mm, absolutely. Well, that leads us on nicely to uh, the first interview of the season with coach Paul James. Hey, PJ, welcome back in front of the camera. And um, there's no doubt that this has been a, a long summer um, and officially the, the longest break in, in BBL. Um, we're looking possibly at an unpredictable season. And with that in mind, how are you feeling about the, the cup fixtures which have been released? 
Well, I'm just glad that we uh, finally can get some games under our belt. Um, it's been a long time coming. Um, we've had our domestic players here since September 1, sort of work, working hard and now bringing in our Americans. So, you know, it's one of those things where the situation is what it is and all we can do is just make sure that uh, when the day comes that we're ready to play. So with it, the players back together now and on court, how have you adapted to, to realistically preparing for the unknown? It's kind of business as usual, you know, we're, we're on the floor, we were going through the same practices. Obviously, there are protocols to be had and, and to be done um, based around, uh, you know, making sure we're keeping everybody safe. Um, and, and with our bubbles that we have, I think we're doing as much as we can do to, to make sure that as a group, um, say, we're ready to go when we need to go. So as far as the court stuff and the stuff in, in, in the S&C suite, yeah, it's pretty much the same as the same as normal. Um, yeah, and just, just looking forward to our first set, set of games coming up. So we, we've already mentioned that the cup fixtures are in the diary and the Raiders will open up against the, the Southwest Derby, against the Bristol Flyers. And does that game spark a little bit more motivation in you or is it going to be business as usual leading up to that game? We just look forward to playing some games. You know, we haven't had a, a lot of time in, in the build-up to these games. You know, 13, 13 days pretty much with everybody being here. So... Uh, as much as possible, we're kind of focusing on ourselves just to make sure that we are gelled as, as much as we possibly can be uh, going into this Bristol game. Um, so we're just on the floor getting up and down, getting used to sort of playing with each other and who can do what and when. Um, you know, but so far it's been, it's been pretty good and, and, and Bristol will be our, our first competitive game. So on paper, I don't think anybody can argue that it looks like we've got a really exciting and entertaining basketball team this year. Um, what do you think the fans can expect from, from this group of guys? Well, they can expect some uh, real quality basketball um, this season. Uh, we have some very uh, experienced, high IQ basketball players on the team. We have some great athletes on the team and uh, it's going to be fun. You know, it's going to be it's gonna be up and down, but very controlled as well at the same time. And, you know, we have a team with, with many players who can score in different ways, but also defensively, I think we're going to be very, very solid. So I'm really excited to see what we can do against uh, some of the other opposition out there. There's some really... Uh, tough rosters out there at the moment in time, but now it's about putting it all on the floor and seeing how we come together. Perfect. Any final messages for the fans? Yeah, just just tune in to watch us. You know, you, we know it's a shame that uh, you can't be here with us, uh, you know, at our games, but we know you're going to be here with us in spirit. So, you know, we're going to try and entertain uh, as much as we want to, and and we'll look forward to sort of hopefully being back together soon. Thank you. So there you go. There's uh, Coach PJ just chatting through uh, his thoughts for the season. Um, you know, as the show goes on, we're going to try and have some more exclusive interviews with guys, stuff that you won't find anywhere else. We're going to kind of dig deep and see what we can do. And, and obviously, what's the testing time, but we'll try and get some exclusive stuff and maybe some fun stuff with some of the players and, and the other coaching staff as we go along. But he was saying there, obviously, about the players that we've got. I know, Pablo, you've got a, a, a big list of players, a big list of questions. And I know you're a stat man. So, uh, well, the new guys. I'm interested in the new guys. So okay. let's start with Chris Porter Bunton. Guard, guard forward, he's listed at. Yeah, yeah. He's a pretty big guy. I mean, yeah. in terms of his impact on the team, just in training to start with, what kind of a guy is he? he he's a hard worker. Um, he's a really hard worker. He wants to get, you know, he wants to go... From the start, you know, he lands in the UK, he wants to get on a basketball court, he wants to train, he wants to play, he's ready to go. Mm. You know, you see, and you, you might see it a little bit in a clip later, or you've seen it already, there's a, the kit video, new kit. Mm. And, and you see him sort of doing this, like like a Superman type thing. That's his mentality, he's ready to go, right? And he's quick, he's a quick combo guard, he can shoot the ball really, really well, he can score really well out of anything. Um, I don't want to give too much away, yeah. you know, Bristol Flyers might be listening well, in the first game, you know. Know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, but it, he's the sort of player that gives you lots of problems. You know, if I can put it in perspective of if I was a coach coaching against him, mm. you kind of got to pick your poison a little way. Is what, you, what are you going to do to stop this guy? Because you do this, he's got that. Mm. You do that, he's got this. Um, and he's that sort of player. He, he's very exciting. Mm. He likes to score. He facilitates the ball really well. And the biggest thing, he's, he's a really hard worker. He was over 13, nearly 14 points a game yeah. last season. Mm. He, I mean, he's another guy that's coming that's quite young. There's a number of teams this season that have brought in genuine rookies. Yes. Which is always a bit of an unknown. But obviously, 
yeah. this guy, you've got like a, a season to see what he can do. Yeah, it's rookies. I think if you scout well, and, and we, you know, we like to think we do. Um, Danny and PJ do a phenomenal job mm. of, of scouting and recruiting. You just have to tell the type of league that they've been in before. Is it a league which has familiarity with the BBL? Or is it something a completely different beast? Because you get guys who come over here and they, they, it just takes them a little while to catch up. It takes them a little while to catch up. To get, people don't realise how athletic this league can be, how physical mm. this league can be. Um, and when they know that and they get used to that, they can see them blossom. And sometimes you haven't got time to find someone that blossoms. You need someone who's very ready to go. Mm. Um, and he's certainly one of those guys. Well, definitely look forward to seeing him start in Bowling Green, Kentucky. It says he's, he's from... Not the sort of Bowling Green we found down Central Park or anything like that. It's, it's <laughs> a little bit more advanced. <laughs> uh, next up, Prince uh, eBay. Yes, Prince um, eBay. <laughs> another guy, 6'10". See, I like this. I like the, the fact that the guys you're bringing in are big yeah. guys because the BBL, usually, you don't yeah. get the huge guys coming in to this league. Yeah. I mean, uh, was it Willie Clayton? Yeah, yeah, he was a bit of a beast. Six, on it. Yeah, six, he was seven, a big six, boy. eight, not huge, but yeah. still were able to create a storm. Yeah, I look, he looked like he could bench press me and you together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. I'm quite angry. <laughs> <laughs> but this guy, genuinely 6'10", uh, yeah. forward or centre, um, Texas. Yeah, great, great college. Huge, huge college great to come college. from. Um, I mean, the stats aren't bad. He's he's not played a many minutes for them, but you know he's he sort of averaged across his career two nearly three points a game, nearly four rebounds a game. But NCAA D one, yep. great, obviously great um, pedigree to yep. come from. Yeah, what's he like in training? So you know sometimes in the league where you see a guy and you see his stats and you're like yeah six seven, you look at him, you go nah mate, you're six two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, Parker Jackson Cartwright. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I stood next to him, man. He was up there. <laughs> I bet he went past you quick, though. <laughs> Couldn't stop him. Yeah. Um, this guy comes in and he's like six ten, going on like seven five. You know, he's huge. Yeah. He is massive. Yeah. Um, and he's physical. He's he's a real. Do you know, if I want to try and keep it, I don't want to get too technical and tactical. I want to have the fan in me a little bit. He's a dunker. Mm. He's a dunker and he's a shot blocker. He does the dirty work. He can put the ball down like you wouldn't believe. You can see the highlights at the end of this tape. Like he blocks shots and you'll put it into Rose. <laughs> right? You know, the guy's a monster. And he's a great guy as well. The team are loving it right now. He's coming in there. He's enjoying himself. You know, he's a real physical presence. And if Raiders fans from the past... And you might have a flashback of this as well. You remember the, the days of your Colton Aaron and your Terence Durham? Mm -hmm. These big, physical, athletic guys mm. who were just strong. Zach Wells, yeah. Right, and hey, Zach was a big dude. He's massive. He's a big dude. <laughs> Mate, in pre-season, he shut down CJ Getty. Yeah, he, he was a big dude. He changed shots. Um, but I'm talking these really, really bouncy, athletic guys. Mm. There you go. That's Prince. That's so Chris. It's yeah. like a human highlight reel then. That's what we're expecting. Yeah, very it? much so. <laughs> he's, he's, as well, he, I mean, he's, his G League stats are pretty good. Yeah. And I believe the Long Island Nets, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that he's been involved with BBL royalty. Go on. Because somebody by the name of uh, Alton Bird, I believe, is involved with that team. <laughs> Blimey. Yeah. That's, that's, some that's, that's going back some, so, some time. One of the best. One of the best. Ask him about him. See if he mentions him. All right. <laughs> I remember that. So we've got another guy, Australian guy. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Beastie. Yeah. A little bit of an unknown. Mm -hmm. um, NCAA D2, Regis in Denver. Decent yep. stats there. So yeah, yeah. Kind, kind of outweighs not being D1, but good stats in D2. Yep. Not, but not a bad thing. What's, what's this guy like? Um, personally, the best way of describing him, keeping it simple, he's an all-rounder. Mm. Shoots the ball well. Finish at the hoop. Passes it. Got good size about him. Yeah, another big uh, guy. Yeah. Play inside, play outside. Uh, very, very versatile. Um, he fits into what we've got really nicely. He's a real good complement to mm. everything else which is around us. He will have an impact. There's no doubt about that. He, he can score the free. You, you see in the video, watch him take a free point shot. I don't even know if I can put a bit of paper under the feet. His release is so <laughs> quick and his shot, but it's, it's pinpoint. 
It's a really nice shot and he can get the shot off really quickly. You know, like like Will can from the from the three point line. You know, like mm -hmm. Will Neighbor can he can he can pick, pop and, and shoot the free ball. But he's got a bit of that, he's got a bit of everything, which is which is just what you need. Multiple threats. Well, alongside him potentially as well is is somebody that people will already know. Yeah. He's been an MVP in the trophy, I think it was. Ashley Hamilton. Obviously we've seen him yeah. for the Royals, incredibly effective. Yeah. Uh, playoff final, wore Jordan 12s, which I love. Yeah. Uh, what's this guy like? He is the nicest guy you'll meet on the basketball court. Like, genuinely is. Um, the nicest guy. He's got a great family. Um, I, I, he's, I went over when, when they first arrived. I had to go deliver a baby game, you know, as you do. Right? <laughs> um, and I met, I met his cat, Simba. No way. No, sorry, not Simba. No, Mufasa. He's going to tell me I was cat. Even better. Yeah, that's completely two different sides of that film, isn't it, there, really? Uh, <laughs> um, but no, he's the nicest guy, and he's a really hard worker. We, we do a couple of shooting drills in training, and he will not let me leave to go home really? until he's completed these drills, until he's got a certain percentage or made a certain amount of shots. Like, generally a great guy. Um, sometimes you can have players in teams which... Are, are superstars known as superstars and they come in and they act a bit like superstars yeah yeah this guy is completely different like the fans are going to love him humble he, yeah. yeah really humble really nice guy and actually basketball wise we haven't even touched on we just know he's super talented yeah super talented knows how to win uh, and that's important well somebody else um i don't think they played at the same time at the royals um and it's anybody who, uh, listens to or watches the Below the Room show will know I am very high on this guy. I think he's one of the best BBL players I've seen in recent years. Yeah. Andrew Lawrence. Um, I mean, is he, as, is he as good as he looks? Do you know what I mean? Is he... <laughs> he's a game changer. Yeah. Um, X-Factor. Yeah, yeah, he's a game changer. And <laughs> story about him, he really frustrated me <laughs> on one of the trainings because he is so clever. Yeah. So... Training as normal, guys went to get into a bit of five on five. PJ looks at me, waves his whistle in the air, and that means I've got a ref. <laughs> I can't stand refing at training because these guys are really competitive. They start, like, I go from then coach to ref, and they give me so much stick. But Andrew Lawrence is so clever and how. <laughs> He moves the basketball and uses his body and things like that. I didn't know what to call and when to call it. <laughs> he, was, he kept catching me off guard and putting his fouls in. And if I didn't call it, he's on me. And like, He gave me some stick in that five-on-five -five game. But watching him play from a different perspective than coaching, mm. just so clever. Yeah. So, so clever. Um, changes direction like mm. that. Can get shots up from anywhere. Um, just controls the floor. You know, like you said, he's a massive X factor. Well, he obviously was summer league, uh, yeah, NBA summer league for Washington at Vegas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not bad numbers either. Considering he's been playing many minutes, he's played four games, like sixteen minutes a game. He's on five, six points. Yeah, yeah. nearly three rebounds. Shoots and the ball, guy yeah, can yeah. pass. He's, he's shooting amazing. Shoot. Obviously, he was part of the Olympic team as yeah. well. Yeah, and his international career has just been second to none. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's going to be so exciting to have him on the team because, yeah, not forget beginning of last season, he came with five other. I think it was five other players with the Royals. Yeah. In a game that I thought the Raiders were just going to walk, and he just yeah, didn't ran we all the show. Yeah, he was <laughs> insane. That guy was insane. He um, and he, do you know what? He's a he's a good guy. He looks after the the young students as well. Like. He sees the best in people, and if, and if people ask him for advice, he gives it, mm. and, and he helps the guys. He puts arms around people, so he, he's a good person to have around. Mm. Yeah, no doubt about it. Definitely like a leader, yeah. So, I mean, if I said to you, like, we, we, we need someone feisty, we're going to go in the trenches, and it's going to be a fight, and we need someone just like that, and we've got LVC Dusha. <laughs> <laughs> the guy is yeah. just non-stop. What, what's this guy uh, like in training? He surprised me, you know. Like, I've seen him play multiple times. And I like how he plays. He, he, he's a very good point guard. He moves the ball well. He doesn't stop talking at training. Really? Like, he doesn't stop talking. I'm not surprised at that. I don't um, know why. He doesn't stop. <laughs> he, 
he's communicating the whole time, yeah. defensively, offensively, on the bench. Like it could be talking about anything, but he communicates all the time, mm. all the time, and he really encourages the young guys. And he, do you know when people say train as you play? He's the prime example of that. Um, he's a prime example of that. I he's made a mistake with him yeah. at training that he said, "Oh, Paul, can you D me up for a couple of jump shots and things like that?" Look, I never was anything. I never am anything. So put me to play defense on V. I, I had to say to him in his ear, I said, look, mate, don't make me fall over. Because <laughs> like, he's really going at me like yeah. I was like a BBL player. And it was, he just works. He works and he talks a lot. Um, he's a great person. Um, and I, I'm really pleased that he's here because actually he, he brings that leadership as well. And he, mm. he brings that veteran know-how. He's, he's been in the league longer than people realize. Well, he feels like he's been around for, for a while. He's only a young guy. He's only 26, isn't he? Yeah. 2013 14 was Scorchers. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he had a few years with them. Came yeah. to Plymouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Played against the Scorchers. Yeah. Got fouled out. Was really going for it. Got fouled out. That day. With like a quarter left. Someone was holding him back on the baseline oh, for something. I don't was, know what happened. He was but, yeah. going for it. He was great. Um, played a bit of Euro Cup as well. For yeah. um, I, I was going to try and pronounce the name, but I'm not going to. So we'll just you, leave it at that. You know, talk, some Euros you, yeah, if you're talking a group of point guards in a team and in the BBL and someone people that you want on your team, he's up there. Like, yeah. And and you realise that more when you see him at training. But he turned the game as well. The the um was that the trophy or the cup final against the London Lions? Yeah. Played in overtime yeah. as if he'd literally not played any minutes in the game, like yeah. fresh, and just was going at it. Turn, turn the game, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, hundred. Yeah, he's he's a great he's a great guy. He's a good personality, yeah. and he's he's a really hard worker. Tell me about Michael Otterovia. Big Mike, big another Mike. big dude. Big Mike, big rebounding guy. Rebounds, block shots. Does he, does he train with the glasses on? I just expect him to sleep with them and train with them, <laughs> like shop with them. <laughs> Like, cause that's what I've seen him. In. <laughs> he's a, he's a big dude. He he gets down and dirty, and he say he block shots, he rebounds stuff, he puts it back in. Yeah. Like when you're talking about having some guys who just do the dirty work, like that's your that's your guy right there. Hmm. You know, and I think with more minutes under his belt than what he's previously had, he can make a real difference. Like he, he's always been a, like a solid member of that Cheshire Phoenix team. Yeah. Yeah, he was a real problem when we played them. Yeah. He was a real problem for us. Get, uh, get you eight, nine boards a game. Yeah, easily, mm. easily. Um, and he, he fits in well with what we got. He fits in really, really well. Um, yeah, like sometimes over the years, sometimes we've been missing at Raiders, like mm. just a beast, you know, just a mm. guy that's going to really get physical, like you said. Mm. Uh, and he, he certainly fits that bill. Well, somebody who's coming up from, um, from the NBL, obviously had a really good... Last season, particularly yeah. with, with Kestrels, took the Eagles to the final. In fact, the, the Elliot Sentence, obviously, is who we're talking about. Yeah, him being benched late in that fourth quarter, or was it overtime? I forget now. But he, he basically lost them that game. In my opinion, I'm not a coach. Obviously, they made a decision to go defensively. Yeah, he seems like he can score from anywhere. Is that the case? <laughs> he's a, he's another. He's a funny guy. He's a real personality to trainer. Yeah. Really, really funny guy. He, he's. Uh, he puts a smile on everyone's face, um, whether he means to or not sometimes, but he's, he's a funny dude. Um, and I would hate to scout him. He's so unpredictable, mm. but not erratic unpredictable. Like he can score from anywhere, mm. out of anything. It just happens. Mm. Um, shoots the ball really, really well. He, he plays defense. Um, he's an energizer bunny as well. Mm. Like when he gets onto the court, everyone's like doing their form shots. Elliot Sentence is running laps of the court, dribbling a basketball, <laughs> making a layup at Eve Wren. Does that for about 20 minutes. Um, I think Will started following him the other day uh, <laughs> just to see how many laps he did. He ends up doing about 20 laps before he even starts training. Really? Yeah, yeah, seriously. He just runs laps and makes layups and keeps running the circles. I thought he was messing around to begin with. He does that every day. I'm like, what's this guy doing? <laughs> <laughs> but he, he can score the ball and yeah. he, he works hard he plays tough defense on everybody no one wants to no one wants him matching up with him um, he, he adds a, a completely different dimension to our team that's for sure he's a very exciting young prospect mm. well you've, you've mentioned already Will Neighbour yeah coming back again so we kind of know big what country. to expect from him uh, yeah. what was that is that his nickname big, big country oh, he's, got no, he's got plenty of nicknames <laughs> we, we, we won't go into that no. <laughs> he's, he's one of the best kind of glue guys I think yeah. any, any team he's on 
the camaraderie seems to be way higher. Yeah, very very underrated player, I think, in the BBL. Mm. Um, shoots the ball, plays inside. Um, has a ridiculous hook shot, which is near impossible to stop. You know, you can, you can scout that all day long. <laughs> but you actually got to put your hand up and try and stop it. It's a whole <laughs> different thing. Um, big personality. Um, gels really well with the guys, like you said. He's a really good glue guy. Um, I had the privilege of doing a bike ride with him. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, yeah, in, yeah, in the yeah. original lockdown, you know, yeah. like saying that like you're so long ago. Yeah. Um, cycling one. behind a, a seven footer with a buckled <laughs> wheel was not the best experience of my life. <laughs> but um, no, he's really good. He's really, really good. Um, he, he's really consistent and he can change games. The, you saw that last season oh, uh, yeah. when he came on for us, he changed his games. Won the game at Glasgow. Correct. Definitely. Yeah. Hit a couple yeah. of big threes. Yeah. But I, I know, and you can put pictures up on this, and I hope you do this, because his picture on Real Basketball GM is... I mean, I'm going to show you now. No! <laughs> He's gotta, that's got to be updated, surely. No, leave it! <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant! It's like those pictures of Gordon Hayward, if you've ever, got, if you've ever seen those. When you play NBA 2K, he's still got his picture from like high school. I love that! <laughs> Doesn't look so intimidating, though, does he? Looks like a uh, no, very polite young man. Not at all. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So in terms of roster, I mean, close us off. Well, don't forget, we got we got Denzel Ubriaro. Coming back again. Can't forget him. Like, he's a really good up-and-coming Brit. Um, so athletic. Well, is, it true? is it true he came through a trial system? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I remember the day um, that he came in. I remember the day that he came in, and I actually saw him in town. Yeah whilst he was on his way to the trials and I, and I followed afterwards and he f- we got there and he's like, I thought it was, you were something to do with Raiders. I saw your shoes, the shoes you were wearing, you're a basketball player. And I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so like we, he came through that trial system, joined Mar Johns. Um, it was a, a massive part of the Mar Johns set up with Danny McGee. Um, but he just improves every single year. Mm. Every single year he improves. Um, he gets stronger, he gets faster. Uh, his shots getting better all the time, you know he he's a real X factor and he's a he's a guy that in in the past has come off the bench, and again can change games, mm. can change games. Really good defensive player, real pest on defense. Yeah, you know uh, a lot of time for Denzel, and he's the he's one of the guys, the first guy in the gym. You can guarantee if you can get in there, Denzel's in there, and he's taking two hundred and fifty shots before anyone else comes in. Very athletic, doesn't he? Yeah. He always gets to the hoop. Yeah. Oh yeah. Some oh, yeah. some of his highlights. Reels were, were yeah. insane last season. Yeah, yeah he, I felt from a little bit because obviously there was a lot of there was a number of players before him, so it's like he didn't maybe get as many minutes as he did the previous season. But when he was on, he was so effective. He makes a difference. Mm. He, he he makes a difference. Um, he, he's a good personality as well. Really good personality. Nicest guy. You know, before sort of the COVID stuff came into play, he used to come and help out the junior sessions and, and join in with the kids and stuff and, mm. and things like that. He's a great person to have around the club, around the community. Um, but no, he's, he's, due a, he's due a really big season. Are any more of the uni guys coming back as well? So we've got Isaiah. Yeah, Isaiah, yeah. Isaiah Walker. Yeah. yeah, Isaiah Walker. Welsh international. Welsh international, yeah. yeah. Um, didn't see as much of him last season. He had a, an injury towards the end. Mm. Um, but he, he's a tough kid. Trains really, really hard. Um, you know, he can make a difference. He shoots a free ball, can play inside. Um, he, he's certainly got a bright future ahead of him. That's for sure. So, you know, that's a, that's a rundown of the players. Um, and I think, well, I think you agree, as, a, as, a, as we're both our fans gone into the business, <laughs> yeah. uh, it's very exciting. Very exciting for a Raiders team. And do you know what? You would have seen it today because it was released today. The new kit. What do you think? Pinstripes. You like it? I'm a fan. You're a fan? Well, I'm a 90s person. And, and all the teams in the 90s that were any good had pinstripes. So, what, you're, you're going to be buying yourself a jersey? <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Guess what I've got on the back? Pablo? Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> 100%. Oh. Do you want to get him to sign it for you as well? Yes, please. please. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've won a competition. <laughs> <laughs> no, the kit's fantastic. So you can go onto uh, the Raiders social media, onto the YouTube, Instagram, Twitter... Um, and you can you can find a video of the kit. It's fantastic, and obviously that is available to purchase uh, through Christmas time. I think and both kits have got the pinstripes. Yes, the both kits have got green the green and the white. Correct. No orange. You didn't fancy the orange. Yeah, green and white's good. It was it was a bigger hit than you think. I know. I'd, I'd like the orange. It was a lot of people didn't like it. Yeah. but a lot of people did. A yeah. lot more people than I thought. I think green and white 
it's traditional Raiders. It's yeah. always been Raiders. Um, like the orange was like, it's like a rebel cousin that popped down to see his family <laughs> for a while type thing, you know. I haven't seen him in a while. Foxy should still wear it. He should wear the orange. Yeah, he can, he can wear a flipping out for it. <laughs> Have we uh, seen much of Foxy in the off season? I mean, I saw him fall over the hedge in the video where he's gone out to, <laughs> gone out to bang his saucepan, <laughs> fell in the hedge. That was great. Um, great work. Yeah, he's, he's got his own range of books. I mean, he? he's got yes. cartoons. Of, he's a superstar. That guy. He's got a very productive off season. There's no lockdown for animals. Is he mate? allowed? Is he going to be at the venue? Is he going to be at Pavilion? Cardboard cutout. Answer perfect. I'm not coming if he's not there. <laughs> Stick him in the top corner somewhere. Yeah. I don't know what the dis- social distancing rules are for foxes, to be fair. For mascots. That's something I've already thought about. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, look, there you go. I think that's pretty much us covered. Um, we want to try and make this a regular thing. The first episode is always a bit longer because it's, well, we don't know what we're doing, let's be honest. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't personally. <laughs> no, no. Um, but I think it's going to be an exciting season, mate. Going on. I'm Can't wait. to it. Yeah. Um, so this. Wait for the first game, Bristol Flyers, here we come.